Hi, welcome to CPD Box channel. This is Sylvia. And in this video, I'm going to discuss about various components of the rentals or the lease payments that you might incur as a lessee and how to account for them. Today's question is from a lady from Malta and also I combined it with another question coming from Russia because similar questions are popping up since the standard IFRS 16 was issued. So here we go. We are a large retail chain and we rent the premises for our stores from various property owners, mostly in the high class shopping malls. In some cases, the rental payments are calculated as a fixed fee per month plus a percentage of our sales generated in the store during that year. This is because the shopping malls promote our store and help us to bring in more customers. Also, the monthly fixed fee is adjusted every two years for the inflation rate. We are aware that under IFRS 16, we need to determine the right of use asset and the lease liability as the present value of all unpaid lease payments. How to do it when there are lots of uncertainties and contingencies? We don't know how much we are going to pay based on the future sales and how the fixed fee is going to increase due to inflation adjustment after two years. Very good question, because let's face it, the new standard IFRS 16 brings a few complications to the lessees with so-called operating leases. Well, the main reason is that under older standard IS 17, you just accounted for operating leases straight in profit or loss as an expense, but that dramatically changed with IFRS 16. And now you need to recognize certain right of use asset and the lease liability equal to present value of the unpaid lease payments. And that's simplification, I know, but I wrote a few articles about this topic, so you can visit my website and go through them. Now, let's focus on these uncertainties related to the future lease payments. IFRS 16 names them variable lease payments because their amount varies depending on something. So how to treat these variable lease payments? Well, it depends on how they are calculated, basically. So variable lease payment may depend on index or rate, so like inflation rate or benchmark interest rate like LIBOR, consumer price index, etc. Or variable lease payment may also depend on the future sales, use of underlying asset or other items unrelated to index or rate. So before I explain how to treat these kinds of variable payments, let me explain what the lease payments are. So what are the lease payments under IFRS 16? So for the purpose of the lease accounting, the lease payment consists of fixed lease payments, less any lease incentives. Then you put in variable lease payments depending on an index or a rate. Then the exercise price of a purchase option, if the lessee will exercise it, and penalties for terminating the lease. Well, if the lessee will terminate. So let's break it down. Variable payments that depend on the index or a rate are a part of the lease payments. So the lessee must take the inflation adjustment of the lease payments into account when applying IFRS 16. So, well, how? Initially, you never know how much the inflation adjustment will be after some time. So are we going to estimate it? No, not at all. In fact, it's easier than that. Initially, you simply ignore it. You will calculate your lease liability and the right of use asset based on unadjusted lease payments as known as the, at the commencement date. And then when the lease payments really change as a result of inflation, you will account for the remeasurement of the lease. So you would simply recalculate the new lease liability by discounting adjusted lease payments with the original discount rate. And you will account for the difference as an adjustment of the right of use asset. So yes, it is a little work, but the good news is that you don't have to make unnecessary guesswork of how the future will look like at the commencement of the lease. So you will just take care about it when it happens. But what about lease payments depending on the future sales? Well, under the definitions in IFRS 16, the payments not depending on the rate or index do not enter into your lease payments. 
So in other words, they are excluded. And it means that they are recognized in profit or loss when incurred. Isn't that beautiful and easy? The reason for such simplification is that estimating the future sales and other items would represent very, very high level of uncertainties. So the information would not be of any use. It doesn't apply only to rentals depending on future sales, but also on the future use of an asset. Let me also add that the COVID-19 related rent concessions are basically accounted for the same way, not as lease modification, according to the new amendments of IFRS 16. So just a small example from my own life. My son is farsighted and we visit eye doctor time to time. And the doctor uses the special machine for measuring his diopters. Well, it looks like a gun and the measurement is done with one push of the button. So the doctor explained to me that she must pay the rental fees for every single push of the button on top of some fixed fee. So this is exactly the example of the variable lease payments depending on the use of an asset. Now, let's wrap it up and let me illustrate it shortly. Imagine you rent a space for the store for five years and you agree to pay the fixed monthly fee of 1000 and annual fee of 1% of your sales. The fixed fee will be increased by the inflation rate one in two years. So at the commencement date, you assume that your sales will be 200,000 per year and the inflation rate will be 2% per year. So initially, you will calculate your lease liability based on the fixed monthly fee of 1000 paid over five years. You would ignore the adjustment for the inflation and also ignore the fee of 1% of your sales. And then when you pay 1% of your sale, you simply book it in the profit or loss. Okay. And when after two years, the fixed fee is adjusted by 2% from 1000 to 1020, you would recalculate the lease liability by discounting the fees of 1020 paid over the remaining lease term of three years and book any difference as an adjustment to the right of use asset. Well, if you're interested, I have lots of practical examples solved in Excel related exactly to these issues. So make sure you check that out. That's it for today. So the information in this video is not a substitute from a professional judgment of CPA of your own situation and circumstances, and you should consult CPA or other qualified professional. Thank you very much for watching. Please sign up for my channel if you liked it. You can also sign up for our free newsletter with lots of articles, videos. We offer courses and other resources. So please share this video with your friends and colleagues and stay tuned and visit cptbox.com. Bye.